The Russian opposition leader, Maria Kolesnikova, has called for security officers of Lukashenko to face criminal charges. She's accused them of abduction and death threats after she had gone missing and was later imprisoned. Kolesnikova has said that security officers put a bag over her head and threatened to kill her when they tried to forcibly deport her to Ukraine earlier this week. Kolesnikova, one of the most prominent leaders of the protest in Belarus, had prevented an attempt to expel her by ripping up her passport. She is currently in a jail in the Belarus capital, Minsk. In extracts from a statement that she gave to lawyers, Kolesnikova has said that officers from the KGB security service and the organized crime police abducted her and pressured her to leave Belarus. Now, her statement gives names and ranks of the officers responsible. Her lawyer filed a criminal complaint against the, against the Belarusian authorities for abduction, unlawful imprisonment and threats of murder. Now, authorities have pressured many into exile, including Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, who was Lukashenko's primary rival in the presidential elections held last month. Demonstrations continue against the disputed president, Alexander Lukashenko, who retained power after a recent poll, which many deemed rigged. Lukashenko, who has been in power for 26 years, vowed that he would never stand down despite weeks of mass protest against his rule. It's a mistake that is proving costly for Rio Tinto and its management, bowing to the pressure over cave blasts. The mining giant has parted ways with its chief executive. Chief executive Jean-Sebastien Jacques, who has led Rio Tinto since 2016, will step down along with two other senior executives. Rio Tinto has also been facing shareholders' outcry over the destruction of two significant Aboriginal rock shelters. Analysts see the sacking as a punishment meted out to the top executives as the mining giant had fallen short in response to the mistake where the mining company illegally detonated rock shelters showing 46,000 years of human habitation at Jukan Gorge in Western Australia against the wishes of traditional owners. The blasts, though, enabled Rio to access $135 million of high-grade iron ore. It drew international condemnation and damaged the miners' reputation for dealing with indigenous groups globally. The decision also came amid heightened sensitivity in Australia to its treatment of Aboriginal people, including the traditional owners of the land, the Putu Kunti Kurama and the Pinikura people, who are overrepresented in the country's prisons and suffer poorer health and shorter average lifespans. Now, while some analysts see the incident as a wake-up call for mining companies worldwide on their relationships with First Nations people, others see the departures as the high-profile examples of the increasing muscle of institutional investors to hold companies to account for actions that fall short in areas such as human rights obligations and expected community standards.